So yes, it's finally possible to play SteamVR games and also Oculus Rift games on the Oculus Quest. And yes, this is my first day with the Oculus Quest, so I just need to try it. But the question is, how good does it work? Can we really play those games without major issues? And can we also play some VR simulators on the Oculus Quest? Well, let's find out. I will get to my results at the end of this video, but first I want to show you how to get this running. A big thanks to all my Patreon supporters and a special thanks to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador. So to be able to play Steam VR games on your Oculus Quest or even Oculus Rift games on your Oculus Quest is quite amazing and it's all thanks to the application called RiftCat VRidge or VR Ridge. You are going to need to pay for it to be able to use it for more than 10 minutes per session, but I promise you it's really worth it. It's around 15 euro, I'm not sure how many dollars that is, but it's a one-time payment and once you pay it you can use it on unlimited devices such as the Gear VR, the Oculus Go, Oculus Quest and many others. So go into the Riftcat website and if you use my link over here go.riftcat.com slash Sweeviver you're also supporting my channel so thank you very much for that. I already paid for the application since long ago so I'm gonna start off by clicking the download button and download the application itself. Just create a temporary folder on your desktop or wherever. So let's start by installing Riftcat and the installation process is very fast it's quick and over in just a few seconds including including some updates made up on first install. When the application is installed we have to do a couple of more steps. You have to connect your Oculus Quest into your PC with the provided USB-C cable. You're not going to need that while playing games but at least now during the installation. Also you will need to open up your Oculus application on your smartphone and go into settings then click more settings then go into developer mode and enable the mode. When you try to enable the developer mode for the first time, it's gonna say that you have to create a developer organization on the Oculus dashboard. You can simply just create a new organization with just a few clicks by visiting this site. I'm gonna give you the link in the video description, of course. Just type in your name of your organization, whatever you want, and then click send. Now when it's done, you can enable the developer mode in your smartphone Oculus application. Now open up your browser and go into this web page. I'm gonna give you the link in the video description and this is the Riftcat Help Center which has a full tutorial on how to install VRidge on Oculus Quest step by step and we're gonna just follow this guide. Let's begin by downloading the VRidge for Oculus Quest application file. Put it in just a temporary folder and do the same with the Android ADB tool and put it in the same folder again. Now in the folder you're gonna have two files, the VRidge Quest 1 APK, the application file and the platform tools zip file. We're gonna start off by extracting the zip file to the same directory. I'm doing it with WinRAR but you can of course use any kind of extracting tool. As you can see we have extracted the zip file now and we're gonna copy or move the APK file into that new folder. Now enter the folder hold down the shift key on your keyboard, right click within this folder with your mouse and you're gonna see an option called open up PowerShell window. If we go back to the tutorial you're gonna see there are two things we have to type in into the PowerShell. The first one is this which I just copied and when you right click on the PowerShell you're gonna paste it in there. Now hit enter and if you have never done this before, you're gonna get a device unauthorized. This means that you have to authorize it inside of the Oculus Quest headset. So grab your Oculus Quest now, look into it and you're gonna have a prompt saying that you have to agree on the authorization. Just do it. Do the same command again in the PowerShell and now this time the device is authorized. Now go back to the tutorial and copy this line without those quotes outside. Just copy the line, go back to the Windows PowerShell and just right click. Now when you hit enter the VRidge for Quest is gonna get installed and it's gonna say success. So now we're basically done with this, close down the windows and put on your Oculus Quest and go into your library, unknown sources and start up the VRidge 2 beta that we just installed. 
Go back to the Riftcat client now on your PC. You're gonna see that it actually found your quest now. It's asking, is that your device? As you can see, we're using Wi-Fi here. Unfortunately, USB is not supported yet for Quest as far as I know. So it's not working even though you have the device connected. So you can simply now unplug your Oculus Quest from the USB cable and have it wireless. Click on the Wi-Fi, click yes now, and it's gonna connect to your device. Now you're gonna see that it says free 5 minutes and that's strange because the website says 10 minutes per session but it's only 5 here. Anyway, I would strongly recommend you to register an account and once you have done that, just log into your account by typing up your credentials. Now once you're logged in, you're gonna see that you have the full version with unlimited time. So now the PC is basically connected to the Oculus Quest but before we start up SteamVR, let's go into the VRich settings. The general tab has only the language, but the VRich tab has a presets for the quality that you're gonna see inside of your Oculus Quest. Uh, I'm gonna use high this time and I'm gonna use the resolution of 2560x4040p, which is the highest one. But if you have a slower connection, I would recommend you to use like 1080p or even lower. Turn on the audio streaming as well and also bring up the advanced settings. You can of course use this slider for quality only to just change the values between 1 and 10. But opening up the advanced settings you can have a lot more options. In the advanced settings you can actually change the frame rate between native 72Hz which is what the Oculus Quest is running in. You can use half native which is only going to be 36 frames and in 60 frames if you're watching movies for example. Next up you can change the bitrate and at default is at 17 megabit which is quite okay and I think most routers should be able to handle this over Wi-Fi. The render scale is set to 100% and you can change that to any value possible up to 200%. So let's try this and see if it's gonna work. It's kind of like a super sampling mode for this VRich software. For the streaming options we're gonna use the Nvidia built-in one of course because it's supposed to be the best one. And let's leave the streaming mode just as it is. We have some tracking options but we actually don't need to change anything in here. We can change the tracking prediction but I'm going to leave it at default actually. In the last option which is VR view options you have an IPD slider but I don't think you really need to use it as the Oculus Quest already have a built in IPD slider. And the scale of course but we're going to just leave it at default 1.0. So once all the settings are done let's just start off Steam VR. Now as you can see SteamVR has started and we can see the Oculus Quest headset but, and also the both our controllers are active. The cool thing is that you can actually change the streaming settings, the bitrate, the frame rate, and also the streaming mode while you are in SteamVR already so you can change the quality and see how it affects your performance, your uh, latency and yeah how high bitrate you can even use. I'm gonna start off with 20 megabit and see how it goes. So how does Oculus Quest really work with VRidge in SteamVR and all the games of course? Well guys it depends on who you ask and what you play. For me this is quite an unacceptable VR experience mainly because of the wireless connection. I think it's way too slow to be able to handle that kind of data and that introduces a lot of artifacts, a lot of compression artifacts, also a lot of stutters. Your head is still gonna be smooth, your head movements are always gonna be smooth, but the hands and also your environment starts to stutter a lot. It just feels like a lot of missed frames and it doesn't really cut it in most of the VR games I tried today. And you wonder if the settings could probably improve this? Well, no. I tried different resolution. I tried 1080p, I tried 1440p, I even tried lower. But the, if you go lower than 1080p, the image is gonna look really, really bad. If you're running 1080p and add some render scale, it's okay. At least 150% of render scale or maybe 200 even. But to really enjoy these games in 72 frames per second or somehow make it smooth, it feels impossible. I tried a lot of bitrates, I tried 
10 megabit, I tried 20 megabit, I tried 5 megabit, I tried even 50 megabit, and it doesn't really matter what I choose, it just stutters a lot. And no, there's nothing wrong with my Wi-Fi because I'm using a Google Wi-Fi mesh network. One of the meshes are actually in here in this room, so I have perfect coverage, I have very fast speed and no latency at all, so that's not the problem here, I think. What really surprised me here is that the head tracking, the head movements, when you're rotating your head, when you're panning around, there's like no delay, almost no delay at all, and that is great, because that means that the Rithcat v actually does the job pretty well. The only thing we're missing here is the bandwidth to transfer all the data, all the graphics that are happening around us. Well, if the games were playable, yes, of course I could play them. If you are not prone to get motion sick, you can probably handle this and it's gonna be totally fine. But it's not really the usual judder that you're used to. It's more like real stutters and sometimes the image can just totally hang for like half a second or something and that is really, really uncomfortable in VR. I think the fast USB connection, which is not still available, would solve most of these problems with the transfer of the data and all the bandwidth that is needed in VR. So even though it is running, you can practically play any Steam VR game on your Oculus Quest, but it's still not there. I wish it was, because I was really, really excited about this. I tried games, I tried some simulators, and I gotta say that some simulators actually works better than room scale games. Games. For example, when you sit down, when you're driving a car, Project Cars 2 for example, it just feels kind of smooth. Of course there's gonna be some stutters. In other games like Moss or maybe Hellblade 2, it worked because you're actually sitting down, you're not using the positional tracking much. Pavlov, which is a first person shooter, was basically impossible to handle. It was too much stutters, it was too much lag, there was latency issues of the controllers, and it just wasn't doable for me. I, I couldn't even aim at the opponents and it was just frustrating and I really tried many settings to get it to work but it was just impossible. Skyrim was playable of course, but it gets frustrating. There are even doors that you cannot open because there are some buttons which are not mapped and I'm not sure if you really can remap the buttons, I need to investigate that. So in terms of regular games or room scale games, I think Riftcat V-Ridge is not there yet, it needs the USB connection. X-Plane 11 in VR on the Oculus Quest was quite an okay experience, even though I had some stutters but it was still fully playable and yes the image was good with some added render scale on super sampling with a bitrate of around 20 megabit, it was quite good looking actually, I was quite surprised. You could read the gauges, you could see at far distance and it was just like playing X-Plane 11 11, but all the stutters just made it a little bit frustrating. DCS or Digital Combat Simulator on the other hand was just impossible to handle especially when flying such a fast airplane as the FA-18 Hornet. The scenery is going so fast by you so the bandwidth is just not enough to handle all the graphics which are rendered. Elite Dangerous was also quite unplayable even though it looked great to be honest but it was still too laggy and also a lot of long stutters, like one second of freezes almost sometimes. So all in all, it's both a good and a bad experience. I think it's fascinating that we can actually run all the Steam VR games, including also Oculus Rift games through Oculus Home, which I never really tried in this test. It's quite amazing that we can do that wirelessly on the Oculus Quest. But if this is a good VR experience, especially for beginners, no, I don't think so. I think beginners who actually just started off with VR should stick to the real VR games for now and wait until Rift Cat solves some of the bandwidth problems and makes USB connection at least possible to run this with a full bandwidth and graphics without any lag, without any graphical compression and issues that are introduced right now. I have to add that I actually captured the real VR mirror view which actually shows how much stutter there are because I've seen some other YouTubers showing the other 
imported open VR image which looks totally smooth but that's not really the case because the image is never really fully smooth in 72 frames per second running this on the Oculus Quest, not yet at least. So guys, this was it for this time, this was actually my first day with the Oculus Quest and I just jumped right into the geeky stuff already, but that's just me. Guys, let me know what you think, thank you so much for watching, lastly a big thanks to all my lovely Patreon supporters and a special thanks to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador.